Hey guys, cool bun, we're back. I'm Rick. I'm Maggie. And we are back with Haikyuu. Huh. Last time on. One to one. Yeah, yeah. We took the um, second set and we were pushing them, making them sweat. Yeah, indeed. It was so great. <laughs> indeed. I think it's going to go five sets. It's going to go the distance. At, at the very least. I mean, considering four episodes took two sets. So, in another eight episodes, or, I'm an idiot, another, um, you know, six episodes, well, I feel it should like, be over. I, mean, I feel like we haven't gotten anything on Shir Terazawa yet, as far as, like, their characters. Yeah. Like, outside of the game. I mentioned that last time, that we didn't have any, like, big character, you know, expose episodes. Yeah, we got a bunch of stuff on, um, Abidosai, mm -hmm. particularly on Oikawa. Yeah, we've gotten some other stuff from the other ones, but we've, it's not so bad. We've gotten very, very little from this, which is like the final boss. Yeah, like, at least of this tournament. I like the the crazy guy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even really like that. That just like goes whole hog. It's great. He, He's awesome. He is definitely great. Uh, I do have his name. Tindo. 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 Yeah, Tindo's fun. But who's gonna who's gonna rise to the top? Is it gonna be the eagle? Or is it gonna be the crows? Let's find out! <laughs> you guy appears! He does? <laughs> ah. That was hilarious. Him and his old students. <laughs> Gosh, the guy. I'd like to know what all he knows about the game. UK? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, he's been taking players and basically making them their best versions for the game for a long time. He's not been cramming them into his cookie cutter mold like that other coach. I just, he must really be able to read the players really well. And understand game and game psychology and like every step of the way, like the emotional impact, the psychological impact, just all of the, all of the, everything that goes through your head. Like, I wonder what his playing, like if he must have played. I mean, he's even shorter than Hinata, right? Is but he? I guess he's old. He's so. very old. People he, shrink when they get he old. He probably shrank a little bit. Yeah. But, like, I wonder... And, I mean, people, as a whole, have gotten taller, just over time. If he well. learned that as a player, or if he learned that as a coach. I don't know. But, our coach Yukai's not doing too bad, either. No. I mean, he had old coach Yukai. <laughs> so, like, um, old coach Yukai well, uses the, the same things. I get the feeling that he's a lot different. Yeah, but there's they have similar just like overarching like ideas and viewpoints. Even if they are diff much different and they their processes are different. And temperaments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, still think the game is they have the same viewpoint on what the game is. I love seeing all the players grow and get stronger and better, but Hinata is my favorite. When he does. I mean, it's crazy stuff like that. Well, I, it doesn't even need to be crazy stuff. It's just like because he has such a hill to overcome. Like, yeah. It's great when he's able to do that. And a lot of it is just through like determination mm -hmm. and less from, I mean, obviously he's got a lot of natural talent and he has a, uh, like his reflexes and his ability to like see over the net and like take that all in very quickly. Like his visual processing. Because he's smaller. The synapses in his brain don't have to travel as far. <laughs> <laughs> so he is really quick. Like all that definitely makes him extraordinary. But then it's just his determination and his will that sets him apart. And that's just great. And it's great seeing him just dart around the court just like 
over and over and over again to just do everything. So yeah. he's, got, he's got to run to block. He's got to run to get into position to spike. Like, there's not a rest mm -hmm. period for him. You know, he can't just stand back and take it easy when he's on the front line anyway. Yeah. Is and he ever technically on the back line, though? He is. He serves. Oh, yeah. And he can only be rotated out so many times anyway. I mean, no, like, every time it goes through, like, he and Suki, every time they, they do the switch, the Libro goes in for a bit. Yeah. So. But, yeah, he's at least in the back when he serves, which... Is disastrous. <laughs> it's really not great. But, yeah, just, I, I love the idea of him running for his running start in order to give him the extra height, and then him just being able to bounce off his teammates... I know, thank goodness they've... Uh, <laughs> Tanaka's can... like, I am your senpai, I will support you! He can only do that because he is the smallest. Like if... If um... if Asahi and Tanaka knocked into each other... Yeah. The, da, like when Daichi and Tanaka knocked into each other, Daichi got knocked out! Exactly. <laughs> so it is because he's just this little bird boy with these tiny little bones and this little tiny body that he can just like bounce off from them. And be able to, like, come in on a sweeping motion, which, you know, he could stop that at any point. Like, he doesn't have to go all the way. So the fact that the block is moving, like, that makes an even harder thing. It's like a, a windmill at a miniature golf course, kind of, mm -hmm. you know? like Yeah, I can see that. So he's, even though he's blocking the same amount technically, from what appears on the opponent, I would think it seems like he's blocking more. Yeah. Limiting more options. <laughs> oh, it'd be hard not to like block your rib cage a bit though, with him and his like, I don't know, what must he weigh? <laughs> Coming crashing into you with your arms straight up. Ten pounds. <laughs> He's not got hollow bones. <laughs> He's not just tendons. He's not much more. Yeah. Look at his little ankles. They have them drawn like really skinny. Like even Nishis are bigger, it feels like. Even Yachis are bigger. Of course, she has socks on. Yeah. But still, like, very thin. I loved uh, the, the line, shrimps are only good for eating, not for playing volleyball. <laughs> 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 and then it came out as his voice as well. Oh, gosh, that was funny. So it looks like, uh, I assume that uh, Shiro Torozawa won the third set. Yeah, they they must have. Because it was only just shots of Ushiwaka going bang, bang, bang. Yeah. So we are fourth set, tied up 18-18. to 18. Mm -hmm. So that means, let's see. So Shiro Torozawa took the first and the third, we took the second. So if Shiro Torozawa wins, it's over. So we have to win this one in order to force a set five. And then that's the last. Yep. And then that will be the last one. This was covered like a lot of time. Hmm? Uh, this episode? Yeah. Yeah. Like a set and a half. They did. It blew my ideas out of the water. We got the tiniest bit of backstory for Kinjiro, uh, Shirabu, their setter, their number 10. Mm-hmm. It was watching at like the junior high tourney. It got enamored with Ushiwaka. As you would. He's very good. I mean, he's powerful. Well, yeah, he was captivated by the strength and power, and he wanted to play with the strongest players. Mm -hmm. So, but it's it, it's good to hearing them talk about the other setters. Like he was talking about Oikawa, and like how he didn't want to be that sort of setter. Instead, wanted to focus on strength and power. And Oikawa's in the stands. Yeah, that's pretty great. <laughs> Incognito. With the glasses. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, his teammate but, came as but well. But he freaking, he, he did come here to see someone win. He came here to see someone lose. You think? That's what he said. He did. I don't know. I think he feels a special attachment to... Our great king. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The man knows how to shit talk, man. Hey, it's... He'd make a great heel. It's what you need. I mean... But he is pretty cool. It's like the best of all time 
the bests of all time all do that, I think. Michael Jordan definitely did that. <laughs> like, Hakuho does it without words, but slaps. he definitely does he it. He freaking slaps! That slap! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> It's like, I can tell. It's like, if there's too many false starts, it's like, Hakuko's gonna slap the shit out of that boy. <laughs> I don't know what, like, what kind of player Wayne Gretzky was. Um, he was Canadian. He was probably just like, hi, hello. Maybe. but I'm it, sorry. It seems like... <laughs> oh, and um, uh, the world, like, arm wrestling champion. He's quite the shit talker as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, there's this, you know... Uh, it's about being super competitive and a lot of times the best are super competitive and that's why they're the best. I appreciate Oikawa's, you know, I don't know a good word for it. It's kind of like a mixture of just like focus and interest and I, I'll be honest, like, I feel like Oikawa was more of a coach on his team as well as a player. Like, I, I, he seemed to be doing all the things and making those calls and seeing with those eyes already. Yeah, he's definitely more like Suga on our team mm -hmm. than Kageyama. Yeah. In terms of like being the glue, not not the glue, but like the transistor. Like he takes all the currents that come in through the team and then he regulates them and makes them flow as efficiently as possible. Okay. Um, yeah, I, absolutely, in the, I mean, our team has got, like, pieces of that and such, but I feel like nobody needs to take on that big role because everybody's kind of communicating together. Well, I think people take on the role in their own spheres as well. Like, Suki is definitely taking on that role when it comes to blocking, and he's yeah. giving a lot of, uh... Insights insights orders to like the people blocking with them and such and i feel like nishinoya also about like giving him the ability to receive the ball mm -hmm. so like the, they all sort of have some control over their own spheres daichi keeps the guys from getting wigged out this you know does a song of courage <laughs> <laughs> whereas i feel like okawa had more of a like like, he adapted, but he also very much directed as well. Yeah, he directed all facets of his team. Like, I don't see... Um, Kageyama? Uh, Kageyama directing blockers. Well, I think part of it is being a first year as well. Like, you don't want to tell the upperclassmen what to do, because they're upperclassmen. You know? He's freaking first year, too! He's different! <laughs> His temperament <gasps> is very different from other from everyone else's. Ah. <laughs> it's been a really good match so far. Yeah, it's been amazing. I like the um the old coach and old coach like they still got that like ha. That rivalry. And both sides are tired. They're both winded. They're both getting there. Yep. But our guys, I know for a fact they've been getting that um <laughs> endurance. Run up them hills. Yeah. Do well, those uh, flying chest bumps. Oh, Hinata is going to be the one to watch because he's basically had to up his energy output by like 100%. Because yeah. now what he was just doing on offense, now he's also doing that much effort on defense. But you can increase something by 100% and it's still of his total power output possible. It might still be like just increasing this. To this, Hopefully. but his total is like way up here. Hopefully. Hopefully. We'll see next time. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Q. You can see the next one right now over at patreon.com slash blindwave. You can also see the next three up to there and full length too. Also check out twitch.tv slash blindwave where we play video games. I'm going through Hades, Saturdays, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.